Am I too old and out of touch? Well, it's comforting to find out that really I'm not. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. And you know, I've been having my doubts lately about whether or not I'm sane, whether I'm out of touch, whether I'm, I'm grasping what's going on. Things that led me to believe that are, you know, some of the people in my circle, in my orbit, agree with the things that I'm saying. And I focus on two things, you know, in this difficult time. I focus on, as somebody that teaches leaders how to lead, I focus on the style and the substance, and I focus on the style that they use and are they doing it correctly. And I also focus, of course, on the content. I mean, these are times you definitely have to focus on the content. So, and I have a couple of buddies, people that I know. One uh, is a gentleman that I've known for a long, long time that I greatly admire. Uh, his name is Keith, and Keith is somebody that I, very, very intelligent, and he couldn't disagree with me more. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? He's an intelligent guy. Let me give it a revisit. And then there's another gentleman that I've worked with for 10 years named Francisco that is a very, very brilliant guy. Okay, He and I are, are working business together, and he's very sharp, very smart. And once again, here's somebody that, for all intents and purposes, on a political basis, on a... I don't know, the way we see the world is completely different, but we have enough things to agree with that we get along very well. And so I'm, you have doubts. You have doubts. But those doubts came to an end this past weekend, and I'm going to tell you why. There's a gentleman named Piers Morgan who was on Donald Trump's TV show, Celebrity Apprentice. He won. He's good friends with Trump. Whenever Trump goes to England, Piers Morgan is the one that interviews him. Piers Morgan is a, is a journalist, has his own you know, TV show over there, and he's someone that's always been in Trump's corner until this weekend. And he saw and is talking about all of the same things that I've been talking about as far as leadership are concerned. So I want to go over with you some of these things. And keep in mind... I'm focusing mostly here on the way you lead, the way you direct people, the way you get results. All right. And during this interview, Piers Morgan was talking about the two populist leaders, in the, the one in the UK, uh, the gentleman that just got out of intensive care that got the coronavirus, and also President Trump, of course. And he points out that it was their populism brought them into office, but now it's time to take a nonpartisan posture because now they're playing war crisis leadership. The daily briefings of president president is critically is a president is a critically important person in the world. It's when tens of thousands of people are dying. Now, what the leader must do, and this is this is Pierce talking. I'm quoting him here. What the leader must do is be calm show authority, honest, entirely accurate and factual, and show empathy. The briefings are turning into a self-aggrandizing, self-justifying, overly defensive, politically partisan rally. It's like winning the election is more important than saving American lives. Now in both the UK and the US, complacency in the first few weeks had been damaging. But it's not too late. It's time to attack the virus and stop pumping themselves up and telling us what a great job they're doing and focusing on what matters, human life. This isn't just another situation. Now, the leaders in New Zealand and Germany are being very candid with their people. And they took action right away. The president in France, who was not so quick to take action, said, but he's very candid with his people, said, we don't really know when this is going to end. It's going to be very tough, and we're going to need some lockdowns, but he also conceded 
that he made some mistakes as far as making sure the necessary medical equipment was available. There's something about candor from a leader in a war that goes down well with the public. And these leaders that we just spoke of, New Zealand, Germany, and France, have never been more popular. On the other hand, Trump's numbers are falling. The people don't trust him. He's turning these briefings into self-serving rallies, and they can't understand why he can't do the basics of crisis, crisis leadership, which is to make the public come with you to believe you and to feel that you are on their side. What needs to happen is a global effort in America from all of the states, all of the governors, and the federal government to work as one and show a unified front. He's put the country before himself. He has to put Americans before electioneering. He has to remind himself every day, what can I do to prevent more lives from being killed? Not, how can I score more petty points and preventing people like Dr. Fauci from doing his job and the media from doing their job, which is holding the government to account. Now, recently in, in some of my videos, I made these exact points and I thought to myself, doesn't everybody see this? One of the videos I made was a comparison with uh, Governor Cuomo of New York, the way he holds his briefings. He's a human being. He comes across as straightforward. He gives the facts. He doesn't get upset when people ask him questions. And he's calm. He's cool. He's collected. But he's honest. And when, he, and when he says, this is my opinion, he says, this is my opinion. This is all that we want in our leadership, Mr. Trump. That's all we want. We want an honest assessment. We, if, if you make a mistake, anybody can make a mistake. I mean, don't stand there in front of us and tell us you were being sarcastic when you said to inject, when you suggested injecting uh, Lysol into the human body or putting ultraviolet light. I, don't tell us that you were being sarcastic. We saw it. You could fool some of the people some of the time, but in this case, you didn't fool any of the people at all. Everybody saw it. Even your own news network saw it. But there's still time. The office of the presidency is the most important office in the land, and we respect the office and we want to respect the man and we want the man to be looking out for us always ask yourself in business why am I in business and the president of the United States is in business to make sure that the people in this country thrive ask yourself that question the Washington Post this past weekend had an article that said more time was spent on self-pumping, saying all the good things you were doing versus the time you spent on the actual virus. Is that a briefing or is that a rally? We, the American people, expect more, we demand more, and we want you to give us more, and we're very forgiving. So let's get a brand new start, start over, and let's get this thing under control. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's all get out there and charge. I'm Eli's dad.